Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review Broadcast for September the 11th, 2022. Uh, the lesson review is taken from Exodus to 12th chapter verses 1 through 14 and it's entitled Obedient to Remember. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church located in the Colleen Fort Hood, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas 76543. And you can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. But if you prefer to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacemc at peoplepc.com. Now, we at Greater Peace provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now, let us pray before beginning our Sunday School lesson. Lord, I thank you. I praise you, and I ask that you would go with me as I go through this lesson. I thank the Holy Spirit for being with me in preparation for this lesson. And I thank the Holy Spirit. I would ask the Holy Spirit to be with those that are listening in and help them to understand the word. Ask them to, and ask each and every one that's listening to invite the Holy Spirit into their hearts as we go through this lesson. Lord, as we go through this lesson, continue to be my guide. And make this lesson something that can be used for each and every one that's listening. Not because I have given it, but because it is your word and I am delivering your word. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, for my introduction today, I want to say that today's lesson introduces us to the beginning of Israel's uh, religious year celebration. The Feast of the, of the Passover. That is, that God used as an, the actual beginning of God's promise to Abraham, which states that God will give his descendants, that is, Abraham's descendants, the land of Canaan. The Passover feast was instituted as a memorial to Israel's deliverance from Egypt and their adoption by God as his nation and laid a foundation for the children of Israel's birth into a new relationship with God. The Passover was part of the final plague God placed on Egypt to force Pharaoh to let the children of Israel leave Egypt to go to the land God promised to Abraham's descendants. This final plague on Egypt is where God took revenge on Egypt and its hundreds of gods by causing a death angel to pass over all of Egypt and any household that did not have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost would experience death of the firstborn of the house. Even the firstborn of animals were affected. The Passover was to be celebrated each year in Israel from generation to generation as a reminder of what God had done to Egypt for the Israelites' freedom. Now, in Egypt, God commanded the children of Israel to sacrifice a lamb and place the blood of the lamb on the doorposts in three places. And all who were inside the house with the blood posted on the do doorposts would live with the angel of death as the angel of death passed over. That is, uh, the firstborn in the house would not die as, a day, as the angel of death passed over Egypt that night. Now later, after Pharaoh allowed the children of Israel to leave Egypt, he had a change of heart and decided he had made the wrong decision to let the Israelites leave Egypt. So he sent his army after the children of Israel some days after they left, and the army surrounded them at the Red Sea. 
The Israelites had no place to escape the army of, of Egypt because Pharaoh's army surrounded them to their back and the Red Sea was in front of them and they could not cross on their own means. But God stepped in and parted the Red Sea so they could cross over safely on dry land on the other side of the Red Sea. The army of Egypt pursued Israel using the same path Israel used to cross the sea. But when God commanded Moses to close the path to the, the to close the path while he was on the other side of the sea, all Egyptian soldiers in the midst that were following uh, the Israelites were drowned when the walls of water crashed on them in the middle of the sea. There was another Passover different from the original one in Egypt because this Passover was founded during the crucifixion of Jesus. It began the night before Jesus was crucified and is called the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper of the Lord. The Apostle Paul tells us about that original Passover, uh, that it was a picture of the coming of Jesus to this earth. Now listen to what the Apostle Paul says about the Passover of Jesus in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 8. And I'm reading the NIV version of it. And it says, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So you see, Paul speaks of the Passover lamb, and Jesus was that Passover lamb that he's speaking of. Now, this Passover involving Jesus' death on the cross was also instituted to complete God's promise for Satan uh, God's promised punishment, that is, for Satan in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, which reads as follows. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now, to provide an, uh, an interpretation for this verse, I will use the words of Matthew Henry. And he states when he says, by faith in this promise, our first parents and the patriarchs before the flood were justified and saved. Now notice in giving, uh, notice is given concerning Christ. Now his interaction or coming in the flesh, it speaks great encouragement to sinners that their savior is the seed of the woman born of our bone he, his suffering and death pointed at in Satan's bruising at his heel, that is, his human nature. Satan was basically uh, bruising, uh, he was pointed at, this basically saying it was pointed at Satan's bruising his heel, the heel of Jesus, and that is his human nature. He was a human being while he was here on earth, but he was still a God, he was still from God. And Christ suffered, suffering and Christ's sufferings are contained in the sufferings of the saints for his name. The devil tempts them, persecutes and slays them, and so bruises the heel of Jesus, who is afflicted in their afflictions. But while the heel is bruised on earth, the head is in heaven. His victory over Satan thereby, Christ baffled Satan's temptation, rescued souls out of his hands, and by his death, he gives a fatal blow to the devil's kingdom, a wound to the head of this serpent that cannot be healed. As the gospel gains ground, Satan falls. And that is what Matthew Henry says about the Christ as our Passover lamb. Now, if we compare the events of the first Passover in Egypt to the events of the second Passover in Jerusalem when Jesus was betrayed and died on a cross, the following similarities can be seen. First of all, an unblemished lamb had to be prepared for sacrifice and the blood of the lamb was to be posted on the doors of each house. All who did so lived throughout their, their all who did so basically, the firstborn in the house lived throughout their lives on the earth. 
Now, Jesus was an unblemished lamb prepared for the sacrifice of mankind's sin. His blood is posted on the hearts of all who accept him. He died on the cross so that all who accept him can have their sins forgiven and live. Forgiven sin allows uh, believers in Jesus to live in heaven with him eternally. And all who do not accept Jesus will also live eternally, but in hell and not in heaven. The Israelites left Egypt during the night. Jesus was betrayed during the night. When the children of Israel were trapped between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army, God parted the Red Sea to provide a path to freedom for them by, by parting the Red Sea. And when Jesus died on the cross, God parted the garments separating the Holy of Holies, that place where only the high priest could go, and provided a safe passage for sinners to have their sins forgiven and cross over from death into life. Jesus' death on the cross allowed sinners to have a direct path to Jesus, enabling them to confess their sins without the need of a high priest as an intercessor to God for the for the forgiveness of sin. Individuals themselves can now ask Jesus directly for forgiveness of their sin, be they Jew or Gentile. Now, to further this comparison, God used Moses to lead the Israelites to the promised land of Canaan to live out their lives on earth. Now, God used Jesus to lead sinners to heaven to live out their lives eternally with him. This initial Passover was to be done every year so the Israelites would remember their uh, protection by God on the night of the Passover. God gave them the following command. He said, and, uh, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leavening leaven out of your house. For whoso e whosoever eateth leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that, shows, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now, when Jesus conducted the Last Supper during the Passover, he instructed his disciples and all believers to do the following uh, from 1 Corinthians 11 chapter verse 23 through 26. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now bear in mind, this is Paul speaking this particular verse. And then he goes on to speak of what Jesus had taught, told him. And when he had given thanks, he bet break it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, bear in mind that Jesus is telling us uh, to remember these things that he's done. He's talking about his death. He wants us to remember that. But he never said it for us to remember his birth. He wants us to remember his death and his betrayal also. So the first Passover was to be remembered by Israel by celebrating the Passover each year, honoring their freedom by God from, Egypt, from slavery in Egypt. The Israelites still celebrate Passover today in remembrance of what God did for them in Egypt. And Christians today celebrate Easter in remembrance of what Jesus did when he died on the cross for them. Now, Passover is celebrated on the 15th through the 21st day of the month of the Jewish month of Nisan. Now, for our modern day calendar, the dates for Passover will occur in March or April. Now, Passover celebrations for the death of Jesus was traditionally celebrated two days um, before the crucifixion of Jesus on the Thursday preceding 
uh, Easter Sunday, according to the Christian tradition. Consequently, Passover honoring Jesus is during the time of Easter, which occurs either the, in the month of March or April of each year. Now notice the comparison here. The, the, the Israelites, the Jews, serve, uh, basically celebrate the Passover in March or April, and we celebrate Easter on March and April of each year. Now, and so as you can see, the Passover in general coincides with each, uh, the, the Passover, two Passovers, that is, the one that uh, Israel, God instituted in Egypt, and the one that Jesus instituted when he died on the cross. They coincide with each other. Finally, with respect to the Passover and Easter, it can, it can be defined as follows. The calendar is adjusted to ensure that both of the holidays are celebrated early in the spring. For the church, which believed that the resurrection took place on a Sunday, the first council of Nicosia in 325 determined that Easter should always fall on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal equinox. And the vernal equinox is when the night time is equal to the daytime. The two night and the day are equal in time. In consequence, Easter remains without a fixed date, but it is approximate to the full moon, which can coincides with the start of Passover on the 15th of, of the Hebrew month, Nisan. So that basically is my introduction to our lesson, and I hope something has been said that will help you uh, understand about the, the Passover, give you a new uh, introduction to the Passover. So let's get started with our lesson. The lesson is titled, Obedient to Remember. The lesson text is taken from Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The golden text is taken from Exodus, the 12th chapter, verse 14. And it reads, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now there are two sections for this lesson. The importance of the lamb, Exodus 12 chapter, verses 1 through 7. The importance of the blood, Exodus 12 chapter, verses 8 through 14. So let's get started with the importance of the lamb, Exodus 12 chapter, verses 1 through 7. That is with respect to the Passover. This is the importance of the lamb. Verse 1 and 2 read, verses 1 and 2 read, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. God set the beginning of Israel's annual calendar by declaring the present month they are in as a month for the beginning of, the, of Israel's new year. Now, this was to be the first month of the religious year for Israel, and each year will be set aside as a time to celebrate the Passover for all generations of Israelites. So every year on this, basically this month, they were to do that. And verse three says, speak ye unto all congregations of Israel saying, in the 10th day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. God commanded Moses to tell the nation that on the 10th day of the month, the father of every house shall select a lamb that will be sacrificed in four days. If one considers what God is doing with Israel, we can see that he is taking all things new to them. He is delivering them from slavery. The children of Israel have not known freedom up to this time in their lives. And God will now teach and show them new things he has, del he has delivered them from the bondage of, uh, of Satan. Now today, when people give their lives to Christ, Jesus, they too begin a new life and will be taught new things because their past life did not teach them about the ways of Jesus. Now verses four and five read, if the household be too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor, neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls every man according to his, his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb will be without 
shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Now, God told Moses to tell each family to kill a one-year-old lamb free of any blemishes. However, if a family is small, consisting of maybe just a husband and wife, for instance, God says that two of them, no, two or three small families can kill just one lamb and the blood can be used for the two or three houses and the lamb can be divided between the families for the upcoming prepared meal. It appears that the lamb must be without any blemish, but it can be from the sheep or the goats. Verse 6 reads, And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, that is, kill the lamb. The chosen lamb for the Passover feast is to be kept until the fourteenth day of the month. At the end of the fourteenth day, all the families are to kill the lamb in the evening in preparation for the Passover. And verse 7 reads, And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat. See, you see the blood from the sacrificial lamb is to be placed on the two side uh, posts of the door and on the upper posts, door posts of the house where the family will be eating the sacrificial lamb. Now, small families were to use the blood from a single lamb to place blood on the door of their residence, but they are prob they probably ate the Passover meal in their own homes. So that concludes our first section. Now let's get into our second section, the importance of the blood. Exodus the twelfth chapter verses eight through fourteen. Now verses eight and nine read, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of eat not of it raw, nor sodden in, in all at all with water, but roast with fire, the head, with the legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Now God shows Moses specific instructions for the families in how they are to prepare and eat the pre prepared lamb. It should be noted that the families were to be dressed for travel that night. All families are to roast the lamb with fire, prepared, prepare unleavened bread, and provide bitter herbs, all of which are to be eaten as a meal for this night. They are not to eat the raw meat. It is to be roasted with fire. Now, it should be noted that the preparation for the exodus from Egypt involved families. That is, all the commands from God was intended to be done as by each and every family. The whole nation will be as a family, so to speak. Now, it has been stated by some that the families make a nation, that families make a nation, that is, but when the families fail, the nation will fail also. Now, the lamb was not to be soaked with water because they were to trust that no harm would come to them by not washing the lamb with water before roasting it with fire before God because God would ensure that no harm would come to them by not washing the meat of the lamb because the lamb was to be roasted whole and not washed. Now I say it should be washed, it should be roasted whole because it says it appears that the entire lamb was to be roasted whole with the head and the legs. Apparently nothing was to take be taken out of the lamb during the roasting because it says roast with fire, his head with legs and with pertinence thereof. Now pertinence is defined as the inwards of an animal. And so pertinence basically, they say with the pertinence thereof. So apparently the inwards of the lamb had to be there. They just basically prepared the lamb uh, to be eaten with everything there. A whole lamb is what it seems to be to be. And verse 10 and 11 read, And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hands, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. 
Now, no part of the roasted lamb are to be re to remain until the morning of the next day. All that is not eaten during the night was to be burned with fire before the dawning of the next morning. For the dawning of that morning, anyway. The meal was to be eaten with their clothes on, shoes on their feet, and a staff in their hand, because they were to be departing Egypt that night. Furthermore, they were not to serve the meal in a leisure manner. They were to eat the meal hastily. Now, verse 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. God wants Moses to tell the people that on this night he will pass through the Egypt, through all of Egypt, and he will kill the firstborn of the, in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, unless the blood of the lamb is on the doorpost. Now all people of Egypt will recognize that their gods are no match for him when this happens. So God will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt and show the people that their gods have no power compared to his. In fact, they have no power at all. Now verse 13 reads, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now God explains why he wants the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the house. He says the blood shall be a token unto the house where the family lives, because when he sees the blood, he will pass over the house, and the plague of the death of the firstborn of the house will not, be, not take place. Now our final verse says, And this day, shall be unto you a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So the Passover feast is to be a remembered memorial for Israel, and they are to celebrate this feast to the Lord from one generation to all generations. This is an ordinance from God. The Passover feast is to be an annual event that occurs during the beginning of each new year for all generations of the children of Israel. Now, in closing, I would like to say the following. If the Egyptians had obeyed God's command, they would not have suffered the death of their firstborn. Why do I say that? God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So if Egyptians had heard and obeyed God's warning, the firstborn of the, that Egyptian house would have been spared also. Now, I would, like, I would again like to say that the Passover in Egypt was meant to point to the coming of Jesus because Jesus' death on the cross was the unblemished sacrificial lamb for all mankind. As a reminder that the death of Jesus foreshadowed the Passover in Egypt, I would like to repeat 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 8, as proof of my statement. It says, Get rid of all of the old yeast, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are for Christ. Our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the blood of the old bread leaven, not with the old bread leaven with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And that, my Christian friends, is the end of our Sunday school lesson. I pray that something has been said that will help you to understand God and his ways. Now let us close in prayer. Again, Heavenly Father, I come to the close of the lesson that you have prepared for me to give to those that are listening. I thank you for it. I hope I have delivered it in your way, in the way that you intended for it to be delivered. If not, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will go to each and every one that does not under did not understand what was said and have someone to go to basically help them to understand this lesson because it has some importance for each and every one of us as Christians. I ask these things as always in the name of Jesus. Amen.